Hi, I'm now going to go through the following types of server. Um, first of all, just to, we've kind of defined it in a, a few places before in this playlist, but a server is a dedicated hardware or software that provides functionality to other programs or devices. And those other programs or devices are called clients. So we looked at a client server network, the idea that you have a one or more server in control providing stuff to your clients. And the hardware and software part is quite important. I think we often picture a server as just being a fairly powerful computer, which they are in many cases. But equally, you could run a server right now on your laptop, on your desktop, even potentially on a tablet or phone, because you can just have a software working as a server. And of course, the actual physical device is running software too, just providing a service. Okay, so that word dedicated is quite important. All that means is it does one thing. So it's dedicated, it does one job, and that's providing this service. And the service it provides will depend on the type of server. So starting off with a file server, and a file server, what it does is store data. So its primary job is to hold data in the form of files. And so what it will do is allow the clients to remotely access their files or shared files. So you might have a file server with just individual employees files on it. Equally, there might be a shared area which everybody in the company can access. That's quite a common setup in schools. Certainly I know my school has got individual student areas, but also a, a shared area where you can, as a teacher, set work and all of the students can access it. So a file server could be shared, it could be individual but it's not on the computer, you access your files by going through the network, usually through just the local area network, usually not through the internet, but it could be in some cases, I suppose. Now, the second type of server is a print server. So a print server, as the name would strongly suggest, is all about printing stuff. So what it'll do, it'll manage print jobs. A print job is when you hit print, that's the print job, it's the act of actually printing a document and it will handle the communication with a printer. And we're usually talking about fairly industrial business printers here. Again, you might have some at your school, usually not the fairly cheap ones you might have in a house, right? When you are printing stuff in your house, if you have got a printer, you're pressing print, that print job goes direct to the printer and the printer prints it. A print server is, a, is an in-between. So you press print, it goes to the print server and then the print server deals with sending it to the actual printer. So this is useful when you've got a queue. So if you've got lots of people printing in a company at once, the print server can allocate what is most important, who is most important, it can decide what should get printed when. A home printer is only gonna deal with usually one or a couple of documents at once. A business printer could deal with loads and loads and loads of print jobs at once, and so a queue would be useful, but also, usually um, there is a budget involved in the business and even in schools as well you might get say a limit on how much you can print your print cost might get billed to your department and so the print server can manage keeping track of what was printed and how much it costs and who printed it and the final thing which may be being shown in this picture it looks like this person is using a fingerprint to maybe log in to the printer well if you are able to log in to a printer and in particular, if you are able to print from anywhere, as in you can press print and use any printer in the building, that means there is a print server allowing you to use any printer. The print server is then sending your print job to the printer you've logged into. Okay, so the next one is a database server. Again, the name really helps us out <laughs> saying what it does. This type of server just hosts a database. It holds a database. The word hosts means it allows it to work. So you've got a database stored on this database server. As a reminder, a database is a large amount of related data stored mostly in tables. So lots of tables which are connected, which are related and it's really structured. So a file server also holds data, but in a little bit of a less structured way. A database is really, really structured. And so the database server may allow you to connect to it and receive data, add data to it, search for things and those sort of database management tasks. A web server is our next type. A web server hosts websites. 
sort of holds and supports websites. So really HTML and maybe things like JavaScript and CSS and PHP and so on, other languages are held in a web server. And often because websites have got user accounts and lots of data, often a web server will connect to a database server. That's fairly common. There may well be separate servers, but they could be built in together in some cases. But what this server will do is allow clients to request and hopefully receive web pages using the protocol HTTP or the secure version HTTPS. So that process dictates how clients request and receive data from a web server. And the final two for this video are, well, first of all, a mail server. A mail server is for email. So allow you to send, receive, store, and manage email. I think send, receive, and store are quite obvious what that means, hopefully. But managers, I'm thinking about things like being able to mark an email as important, or archive an email, or put an email in a folder, or mark it as read or unread. Those sort of little actions you might get in an email program will be facilitated by a mail server. And we looked at two protocols related to email. Those were SMTP and POP. Now, there are alternatives. So it might not run SMTP or POP, but they might. Okay, SMTP is for sending emails generally. POP is for receiving emails. SMTP is quite well used. POP is not used as much anymore, but they could be used. And the final one to cover for now is an application server. This is arguably the most vague out of all of the ones covered so far because there are a couple of similar uses in IT. There isn't a definitive definition for this, unfortunately. But what we can say, generally speaking, the purpose of an application server is to allow multiple users, multiple clients, to access software. So you might have a bit of software running on an application server which can be accessed by multiple users at once. This might be, you know, some financial software which every employee needs to be able to access. It might be a central email system. It might be a central call system, like a VoIP system, which everyone's going to be able to use. It just does depend on the context. But often it will be used to almost bridge the gap between a database and the user. You might go through an application server to access a database. That can provide some more security because the application server can double check what you are asking for is a valid request. Equally, it can double check you're not trying to delete stuff from the database. It can provide an extra layer of security sometimes. And the first a separate possible use of an application server is to deploy applications to clients. So when you're running a big network, you don't want to have to go around to every single computer and install the same bit of software every single time. So what you generally do instead as an IT technician is you load up the program on one computer on a server and you can deploy it to every client connected to the server. And that will mean you are able to send the application to the clients and install it remotely. So deploying is where you are installing software on client computers. And this may be run by an application server. 